it's almost impossible to find a bike truly built to the max for this cheap. This is one of those gems. We have a SRAM XO Eagle drivetrain, a full-on Shimano EP801, their brand new motor, which they just released an update to where you can auto-tune the modes to any power specs you want, topped off with a generous 720-watt battery, a robust alloy frame that has been reinforced in all the crucial spots, and big travel, 180 in the front, 170 in the rear, Kashima coating, all Fox factory, and it comes stock with my favorite brakes ever, the Magura MT7s with oversized rotors in front and back. It has other really good attention to detail factors like this double cover here for the charging port to keep it completely safe. Never had a manual SRAM drivetrain. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. I guess we're gonna find out. And a sleek conservative controller that is really out of the way and inconspicuous. This is the Husqvarna Hardcross 5 with the most insane density of value for its price range. I don't know if it's beatable, but I can't wait to take it. It's gonna be one out of three. The other two are hard trail bikes. One is a mutant. The Trek on the right is a true 170 all around, but it's a full 29er. This one's a mullet with a slightly wider tire in the rear. I cannot wait to test out this enduro style mullet e-bike. As far as complete bikes go, right out of the factory for the price, it is a true masterpiece. It needs nothing else. It only needs now to be ridden. The only thing I added to this bike besides new pedals is a E13 180 millimeter riser post. And that specifically, so I can get the seat as low as possible. The lower the seat is, the more maneuverability you have on the bike. So you really kind of want the dropper post to be as tall as you need it and then sink all the way down. And the other one was only like 130 or 150. It was, it was, I had a significant amount more out here and you could feel it when you had to go lean back in the bike or or get real technical and start moving it around. You can feel that seat hit the inside of your legs. And when it does that, it's just not, it's not a kosher thing. So this is the Shimano EP801 motor, their brand new one. I believe it's a 720 amp battery. It says that on the website for the Hardcross 5. That is a big battery. It should last us a very long time. And I'll be giving you analysis of their motor. Boost mode does move. You get it so far. Sorry about the weird color in the video. It's what I had to do to make sure the film wasn't completely blown out. The Insta360 doesn't like to differentiate between shades from the trees and actual light from the sun. It, the exposure doesn't auto adjust as it normally does under consistent light. But anyways, apparently I'm so old that when I took a 15 year hiatus from mountain biking and came back, enduro bikes emerged and so did e-bikes back in the day nobody wanted to take anything that had seven inches of travel up any hill but apparently they make these enduro bikes climb so well that they're giving their trail bike counterparts a big run for their money now this isn't a true enduro bike it's not labeled that at least i don't think but if you look at the geometry in all the specs, it's clear what they're trying to mimic. Now, the only thing that I really feel this thing needed was a deeper dropper post, which I installed, and a three-way chain guide bash guard tensioner combo. It's already good, but those things would just top it off to be unstoppable. It's climbing about 90% as efficient as that Trek, not fully. I am a little bit more tired, I'm going a little slower, but still, it's an e-bike and I'm climbing very well. My real thought behind this was, well, if they can make a standard enduro bike climb so well, yet have all that suspension and travel for all the rough hard stuff, then an enduro style e-bike will just let you sail up the climbs and you'll just have all that extra power and grittiness for the descent. So I'm just kind of taking it easy. I'm not trying to set any records of climb this trail quite a few times now to shuttle myself up. But overall, it does not climb as good as my other two e-trail bikes. But the difference between the two is fairly negligible in my opinion. I don't think it's a whole lot to worry about. I believe this thing would go fast and flowy down actual trails that are up and down and technical all the time. And the extra travel and beefiness of the bike will just help you out with possibly some adverse choices you had to make, some things you didn't see. Possibly you're just full sending a blind trail. That's always fine, right? So just a bike that you know is going to be able to handle a little bit more, give you a little bit more confidence, that steep, rocky thing that you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to go down that. Um, a bike that emboldens you to take chances and send it is a good bike to have. Truth be told, if they made a downhill bike that climbed anywhere close to as good as this thing, I probably would get that too. That's how much I like to go down. 
The walk mode is so nice. Look at all the torque and motor. Look at it go. Okay. All right. Climb wise, I thought it did great. Um, I think there might have been only slight key differences where the truck rolled over so a few things a little bit better. But other than that, the, the, the suspension, man, what a saver. Like, it's not a whole lot enough put on how much, like, added suspension when tuned right. How it allows you to glide over those bumps that will mess you up while you're going slow up a hill. So I think it may climb just as good. Like, we'll have to compare the times. They're relatively the same spots. I messed up on maybe all the same spots, but I think messed up less on this one. I think I might have climbed a little faster on the track. We'll have to go back and see the video. So far, I like how everything's going. Like, I like the air shock. I like how it feels in the back. Might even like it more in the coil. Nah, I don't know. But I do like it. Maybe it's just the added suspension. Gives me a lot of excitement for how the descent is going to be right now. Let's do it. Mike's fault.
talk about the descent. What went great about, I mean, also the, also the climb. What went good about that? So the Shimano EP801, I think a pretty good motor. I think it's very comparable to anything out there. I mean, directly comparable to the Bosch CX line. If there's minor tweaks in power and torque. The only time where I thought maybe it struggled a little bit more on higher climbs, but that could have also been because it's a mullet and it's just not gonna climb as well. You're not gonna get the same like like rolling ability as a, as a true 29er. And this is just a half and half. I think the, the Husk killed it. I think it's a very, very hard bike to beat for the money. I don't know why you wouldn't get this bike. Like I paid just as much for my Truck Rail 7 Gen 2, right around six grand after taxes. And that's with a few upgrades like pedals and the seat and uh, grips and just some other things that just made the bike better. But ultimately felt like I had to upgrade everything on that bike in order to optimize its true performance. And then this thing, you just buy it like this and it's just a boss right out of the gate. It really needs nothing extra. Unless you got a few personal preferences like grips or a riser bar or something. Like I definitely would change the seat post. I think the seat post, that's the Husk stock seat post. And it was a nice seat post. It was just too short. You need a two one eighty millimeter like uh, dropper post because just for the nimble factor for it. Cause then you give it like a lot better true downhill capabilities after that section. I did hit a rotor though after I hit, after I washed on that log and just pulled the bike out back on the trail to get on it. Like I did hit, one of my rotors is out of tune and I don't know how much that drug the performance on the overall max speed. Cause before that it had perfect rolling prowess. It had nothing wrong. I tuned it to perfection before we came out here and made sure it was perfect. So we'd have the best run. I don't know, we're gonna have to just look at the times. Anyways guys, this is my review of the Harcross 5 from Husqvarna. It's a true winner. The Harcross 4 is also a really good winner. It has still very comparable components and probably shreds just as good. Probably could have got that thing for a grand less, saved some money and bought like a plane ticket somewhere. I got this bike in Lake Havasu at Cycle Therapy. A good bunch of guys took care of me pretty well throughout my whole mountain bike re-entry. So if you're ever in town, stop by there. And then also stop by Sarah Park because that's where all the mountain bike trails here are. Tons of single track. Anyways, I'm gonna end this video with one last ride with a very interesting outcome. I figured it was only fitting. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thing needs to be redone. Front brakes all screwed up. Tire seems to be doing all right. Oh. These pedals hang down too low. Ooh. S the whole pedal up. Oh. Dude, come on. You're supposed to be metal. Let's get plastic pedals. Oh, it's all bent. It feels so funky to pedal. No way. It didn't bend the crank, did it? Bent the axle. Oh, what a show. It feels so weird. Pedaling on a bent pedal. 